For our bite of history today, we want to talk about Europeans exploring the Americas. Now, the beginning, of course, was Spain, since Spain was the first. Spain would be exploring America from 1492 through the 1700s. The Spanish Empire in the 1600s consisted of the southern part of North America, Central America, the Caribbean Islands, and most of South America. I'm sure you have heard of the three G's in talking about Spanish exploration. Uh, that is God, gold, and glory. God referring to the fact that the Spanish were taking Christianity to the heathens. Uh, they were taking priests from the Catholic Church with each expedition that left Spain. The Franciscan monks were the ones, uh, the uh, priesthood, the order of the priesthood, called the Franciscan priests, were the ones that went with the Spanish expeditions. And they had their own ideas and methods of converting the Indians. They used exploitation and force. The idea of the uh, Franciscans was to build a mission and to compel the Indians to come to the mission, where they not only were forced to convert to Christianity, but also forced to accept uh, Spanish culture and traditions. The idea of exploitation or force for this religious conversion we can see in one of the messages that a Spanish conquistador named Coronado took with him uh, when he was exploring up into North America. Uh, Coronado would go all the way into what is now Kansas and he would take this notice from the king of Spain that would be read to each village that he went through that told the elders or the fathers of the village that they had to compel their people to convert to Christianity or lose their lives. So it was convert or die. Not only was religious and cultural conversion by force and exploitation, but also the method for gaining uh, wealth from the Americas was done by exploiting the inhabitants. Like Cortez, who would conquer the Aztec Empire in Mexico, he forced the Aztecs to strip their capital city of gold and load it onto the Spanish ships. And when there was no more available gold um, above crown, then they enslaved the Aztecs to mine the gold out of the ground and put it aboard Spanish ships, which would be taken then to Spain. And for over a hundred years, Spain would be stripping the Americas of gold and taking it back and enriching the kingdom of Spain, the nation of Spain. St. Augustine, was established by the Spanish in 1565 as the first uh, settlement, first European settlement in North America, and then Santa Fe in 1607. England, uh, 1497 with John Cabot, sailed uh, on a northerly route from England around Newfoundland and took information back to England of how great the fishing was around Newfoundland. And the English would uh, periodically make voyages to Newfoundland to fish in the waters off the coast. While Spain was profiting from gold and other riches, England is mainly going to uh, profit from fish. Uh, it will be some time before England will once again look toward America 
and try to establish a presence there. And that will be in 1585 when Sir Walter Raleigh uh, promoted a, an expedition to send people to establish a colony off the coast, east coast of North America, which would be called Roanoke. Uh, there actually were two Roanokes established. The first one in 1585, um, the people weren't all that excited about staying and as one day Sir Francis Drake sailed along the coast, they persuaded him to take them back to England. It would be 1587 when once again Sir Walter Raleigh uh, sponsors an attempt to create a settlement um, off the coast of North Carolina, which would be the second Roanoke, um, sometimes called the Lost Colony of Roanoke. The, there were over a hundred uh, settlers who went. The first European, American-born European was born there in Roanoke, in the second Roanoke, um, a little girl called Virginia Dare. But the captain who had, who had the commission, the captain of the ship, was going to sail back to England to get more settlers and to get fresh supplies for Roanoke. That was in 1588. But in 1589, England would go to war against Spain and every English ship was compelled to participate in what would be uh, primarily a naval war. Uh, so no ships were available to go back to Roanoke until in around uh, 1600, 1590 actually. And of course when they went back, uh, they could not find any trace of the original uh, inhabitants. There was a message left on a tree, carved into a tree of Croatoan, and uh, the people thought that perhaps those settlers had either voluntarily or been forced to move to uh, an island further inland called Croatoan. may also have meant that they went up with a, a tribe of Indians by the same name. No one has ever uh, found any positive proof or evidence of what happened to the people in the second Roanoke. They have never been discovered. Uh, there has been all kinds of theories, but no real evidence to support any of those. It would be 1607 before England would once again attempt to create a colony in North America, and that would be Jamestown, which even though they had tragic consequences the first several years for numerous reasons, which we can explain in another session, but it survived, and so it was permanent colony that would grow and become Virginia. 1620, another group of English settlers um, made their voyage and they would land in Plymouth in 1620. That would be those individuals who sailed on the Mayflower. Then 1630, England sent another uh, four ships with over 400 people and they would establish Massachusetts Bay Colony. France would also uh, make their presence known in North America and from 1534 through the 1680s. Uh, the first man to sail for France would sail in 1534, Jacques Cartier, and he would sail through what is now the Bay of St. Lawrence, St. Lawrence River. He, um, he took people with him and was going to create a settlement, leave the people there, but whether the weather was too bad or whatever reason, they didn't want to stay, so they would sail back with Cartier instead of creating a settlement. France, 
attempted to create a settlement just north of St. Augustine. Um, they would build a fort, they called it Fort Caroline, but the Spanish drove them off. There was uh, a terrible battle with a lot of loss of French lives, so the French abandoned that attempt and they would, from that time on, uh, focus entirely in the northern part of North America or in what we now uh, know as Canada. Uh, 1608, just a year after Jamestown was uh, established, Samuel de Champlain, another Frenchman, would sail into St. Lawrence Seaway. He would sail down towards the Great Lakes and explore the area. The French, also Catholic, took priests with them as well. Every expedition, every French expedition that went to the Americas would take uh, priests with them. The French took Jesuit priests and the Jesuits had an entirely different method of converting the indigenous people. The Jesuit priests interacted with the Indians, the indigenous people, uh, by going to their villages, uh, sitting around their campfire with them, eating the food that they ate, and sharing information about Christianity, but also listening to uh, the Indians' uh, accounts of their own religious beliefs. And as far as the Jesuits were concerned, the Indians could keep their own, their traditional culture and spiritual beliefs and just add Christianity to it. Because of this, the French would de develop a very solid alliance with the Native Americans. The way the French are going to profit from North America is through the fur trade. And of course they're going to work uh, closely with the Native Americans in trapping fur-bearing animals. Louis Joliet and Father Jacques Marquette, two other Frenchmen who would explore the Great Lakes and down the Mississippi in 1673 would uh, again take French culture and religion with them as they met with uh, the indigenous people along the Mississippi River. So French uh, are going to have a solid presence and a very good working relationship with the Native Americans. The Dutch also are going to get involved uh, in exploring America. In 1609, an Englishman, Henry Hudson, was hired by uh, the Dutch East India Company, a joint stock company, to find the Northwest Passage to the East. Um, most of these explorers who are exploring during the 1500s uh, and into the 1600s are looking for a route to get involved in the spice trade, uh, to be able to profit from the spice trade. So they're looking for a Northwest Passage across the continents since North and South America's blocking their way to the east. Uh, they're looking for this Northwest Passage and that's what Henry Hudson was hired to do. And the profit that the Dutch will acquire from the Americas is, is going to be in the fur trade like the French. And it is Henry Hudson who first begins uh, developing that fur trade for the Dutch East India Company. In the 1620s, the Dutch uh, establish a settlement they'll call New Amsterdam, and they are going to claim land uh, in what is now New York for the Dutch. They will call it the New Netherlands. The relationship, um, as far as the Dutch are concerned, the Dutch were Protestant. None of the Protestant countries took uh, priests or preachers, clergy, 
with them in their expeditions. But they were all supposed to take Christianity in the charter that the men are given to create Jamestown. King James the first, uh, one of his requirements for giving them permission to cross the Atlantic and create an English colony was that they take Christianity. So Protestant countries, um, like the Catholic, they intended to take Christianity to what they called the heathens, uh, but they did it as individuals, not as through a priesthood. The Dutch relationship with the Indians was more competitive than friendly, uh, although they would, there would be some Indians that would uh, convert to Christianity. They would be called friendly Indians. The Dutch relationship with the Indians was inconsistent. Uh, so they did not develop a good alliance with the, Indian, with the Indians. 1664, during a English war against the Netherlands, England won the war and uh, the Dutch lost their holdings, their territory in America, and that area would later become uh, New York Colony. Also, the Swedes from Sweden um, made their attempt in North America. Uh, 1637, the Joint Stock Company, called New Sweden Company, uh, attempted to create a settlement along the Delaware River. They would establish small farms, uh, they worked in the fur trade. So they, they did create a Swedish presence there along the Delaware River. But in 1681, the land would be given to a Quaker, William Penn, and Sweden would lose their hold in the Americas. So to cap this off, from 1492 through 1630, England, France, Spain, and Portugal are making inroads into life in the Americas. England is going to concentrate on the East Coast above Florida. France is going to concentrate along the Great Lakes and in what is now Canada. Spain focuses their attention on Florida, Mexico, Central America, uh, the Caribbean islands, and Portugal will concentrate on the bare east coast of South America uh, because uh, the Pope at the time created what was called the Treaty of Tordesay, which divided the world between Spain and Portugal. Uh, rather than having two Catholic countries in competition, this line, which went through South America, west of the line, the Pope said Spain could spend their attentions their activities west of that line and Portugal east of the line, which led very little of South America for the Portuguese, but uh, all of Africa as far as uh, the Catholic Church was concerned. So Brazil and South America will really be the Portuguese stronghold in South America. This is a short bite of history. If you would like more, I hope you will come back for the next session. Please check the description box below the video for references and for more information if you have an interest in this topic.